morning, everybody, or good afternoon if you're in the UK and Europe and Africa and points like that. Thank you and welcome to our little live uh, presentation or live Q&A that we have going on here on Thursday mornings, a lunch and learn for some of us. Uh, sorry, kind of without the lunch. I, uh, You know, I need to do one of these one day where we talk about really cool different recipe things that we can do for a quick lunch. Uh, but mine's kind of boring because right now it's usually I'm trying to eat better and uh, work on my girlish figure. So uh, that uh, usually involves vegetables. Uh, I lost 68 pounds at one point. You wouldn't know it now uh, because I fell off the wagon, so to speak, and uh, gained a lot of it back. But during that time, that was my lunch was two bags of uh, frozen vegetables. And it worked very, very well. So. Glad to have everybody. My name is John Nelson, and uh, appreciate you uh, jumping in with this. Now, um, I'm going to. Sorry, we're running a little bit late this morning, too, by the way. But I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to issue a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a housekeeping here, a, an offer, if you will. So I see all these people out here posting that they're go high level experts or they're experts in one form or another. What I don't see is a lot of actual training. I even see some giveaways of people jumping in here, but I don't see any training of anybody or anything. So let me make you this offer. If you're willing to come on and educate us about some aspect that you're particularly good at of go high level or marketing strategy or business strategy, then uh, then then DM me after the uh, after the program here. Let me know what you would uh, like to come on and talk about and uh, I'll be the host, but you get to present your ideas and yes, at the end, we'll do a little pitch for your services and uh, as to as to what you're on there doing. So happy to do that. Um, so, you know, look me up now. Understand that presenting like this is a little different than doing, say, a Loom video or something. It's it's a lot more real time. You have to condense some more things. So we will talk about that prior to you going on. But it is an opportunity. I'd, I'd love to see what some of the expertises out there are. I mean, I've got a list of topics that I can go through and then I can pull in people to go through. But I'd also rather hear from you. If there's something that is of particular importance that you have mastered out there or something that you feel is important to uh, have a solution for and you have the solution because it's a because it's a big topic right now, then uh, then let's talk about it. So uh, send me a private message after this. Um, in in the group here, and we will uh, and let's let's see what that can look like. I'll connect up with you, and we'll have a call, and we'll talk about it, and then we will get you scheduled to be a part of our live Q and A's. This is a uh, this is a team sport, by the way. So I uh, want this to be something that is important to you all as well. So just wanted to put that out there, and uh, so you know because I have a lot going on. I've run an agency. I'm doing the Atlas Agency Launch Lab training stuff. We have some other things that are about to start happening. So there's a lot going on. So I'm I'm grateful for the for the help. Quite honestly, so it would be it'd be good and it'd be good to talk to some other folks and kind of get the pulse of what's out there. So that's that's my advertisement. That's my reach out. That's my challenge to you all. So I'd love to see what you uh, come up with and let's talk about it. Meantime. Let's talk about getting paid and go high level. And uh, and this is, I'm not going to do this justice because there really is a person I need to get on, get this on, get on here with me to talk about it, except he is extremely knowledgeable in it. And I'll go ahead and give his company a plug. It's called ECI, Electronic Commerce International. And uh, they are a credit card processor. And I am supposed to be a sales agent for them, but I have been, it has been awfully slow for me getting started in that respect. Uh, so the founder of that, one of the founders, it's a, it's a couple now that owns it. And they're like a lot of us where they used to have the, the big agency. They had all the people, they had every people running everywhere, you know, handling credit card processing, setting, setting that up for businesses across the world. Uh, they had the big office in Las Vegas. Uh, but then they decided, you know what, there are different ways to do this and technology allows us to make that happen. So they have scaled down to uh, a much, much smaller size and uh, and brought in people to to help, you know, run that virtually, as a lot of us have. So that is uh, that's kind of where they're at. But it's a, it's a cool story. Very, very knowledgeable about the credit card industry. 
Um, and so I'm going to try to beg and plead and make that right. And maybe I can get him to come on and talk to us about that someday. So, cause it was, it was fascinating to me. It was just so much. It was almost like overload, you know, drinking from a fire hose sort of thing. Uh, it was tough to, to process all that and, and get it through. But so I'm going to try to do this justice the way he would explain it. Um, but it's, I, I'm not sure how good of a job I'm going to do, but I will, I will do the best I can as a dig, digital marketer, right? So, um, so this is, let's talk about the basics. So there have, for the purposes of our discussion, uh, there are basically merchants or payment processors and there are payment gateways. Uh, and this all has to do with, uh, a couple of things. Um, there's a, so, so what we're ultimately going to be talking about, I'll just go the spoiler alert here is a payment gateway. Everything that's set up and connected in go high level, you set it up as a payment gateway. So what that basically means is two things. One, it means because who's, I'm going to actually go out of order here because the difference really has to do with who is handling the security of the transaction. Who is the one? Because ultimately, if I buy something from you, your bank has, uh, you know, your, has access to that account. Or if it's a credit card, your credit card has access, they control that account. And so you, you go buy something from me. And so the, the cost of that is debited from your account your your credit card or your bank account and comes over to me and is deposited into my bank account. Um, that's essentially how the transaction works. So the question is, do you have, uh, are you the, as a marketing agency, standing right there in the proverbial sense, making that happen, taking from one to put to the other, or, which is much more common the case, and what we're talking about here, do you employ a company uh, called Stripe or Authorize or PayPal or NMI or any of those uh, they, that are that are payment gateways? That they're so it's their personnel that are standing there, not physically, obviously, but in the digital sense, they're taking the payment from you and handing it to me, and I don't have to worry about that because I have authorized them to do that and to handle that for me. And so they take in as well as you, you know, by buying the thing uh, are allowing them to to make that transaction happen because it's what they do. It's what they're good at. They do it all day, every day. So there is a there is a higher price to pay for that. Depending on how hard the trans the money is to move. And depending on how secure everything has to be and what what measures have to be in place so that credit card numbers don't get stolen and fraud doesn't happen and other things uh, start going on there. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So you have so you have that. So th this is very, very heady conversation just to, and I'm trying to make this as not heady as possible, you know, where your eyes glaze over and you stop. Uh, you know, you stop thinking about this kind of like talking about go high level to anybody who's outside of marketing, <laughs> including clients sometimes. Uh, but this is this is all to say. All these all these credit card processors, bank transfer processors, uh, in the case of, you know, something like WeChat, it's their account, pro their the whatever bank processes that controls that that money. Um, you are paying a company whose sole job it is to make that transaction happen and to make sure no data gets lost, no credit cards get stolen, and the money ends up where it's supposed to end up. So that is that's what we're doing here. But that does change the to to employ them to do that means you'll pay a little bit higher processing fee to make that happen because everybody gets their cut along the way. But the thing they don't tell you is if you're going to be the merchant, if you're going to be the payment processor, and some people are, there are reasons to do that. Um, then you have to worry about the security. You have to do those. Yes, you're paying a lower fee to somebody else to make that happen. You still have to pay a base 
you know, fee to each bank to make that happen. But you're the one you're you're the one handling all the rest of it and not paying somebody else to run security for you. Uh, and so, yeah, you might save money, but yet here you are still paying somebody else to run security or or to handle that expertise or paying employees to do that sort of thing. So setting up a payment gateway is the the easiest and quickest way to do that. But it means a few. It, it means you give up a little bit in what they call points. Um it's not points in the in the true sense of the word, but you, you you give up you give up money to do that because you're paying it to somebody to make sure that doesn't happen, that craziness does not happen. So does that make sense? Uh, it gets easier, I promise. Okay, so let's talk about the different payment methods that Go High Level currently deals with. Okay, and I apologize, I was going to get into I use Stripe. I'm in the process probably of changing to authorize.net, which is both of which are one of the two here uh, for reasons of dealing with that other company, actually, with the, the company I'm ECI that I mentioned earlier um, and, and not really any other reason. But the, the basic principles are the same. So Stripe is the uh, PayPal is really the one they started with. Uh, everybody in the there are people in the U.S. that really for there's a great book called The PayPal Mafia. Um, if you ever find it, it's uh, it talks about some of their practices around associated with eBay in the early 2000s and some of the stuff that went on will really get your attention. Uh, PayPal has sought to clean up their image and clean up their act. And so they have uh, have largely done so. Um, and so they have become just a I mean, they they offer several lots and lots of services. But they have focused in on what they're, you know, supposed to be good at is being a payment processor and, uh, and and doing that sort of thing. So they have cleaned up that image a lot. But yet there are some people, particularly in the United States, who still have a bad taste about it. But nonetheless, it is supported. It does work. It's one of the first ones Go High Level started with because it was there and because they could accomplish some things internationally. Uh, with it, that their the second partner they added, Stripe, could not, um, and Stripe wasn't necessarily may not been a, a around or as prevalent at that time. So, second one they added is Stripe. So we're sort of going in reverse order, but this is the order it's listed is kind of the. I, I don't want to say it's probably the order of if you were to add percentages of the number of people that use these, this is probably where you would end up. Uh, top to bottom with Stripe being the most prolific. It's the one that everybody is, the most people are using, mostly because it's been the one baked in to go high level the longest. And honestly, they do a good job. They they do exactly what, they, what they're supposed to do. So Stripe is a, is, a, is a great way to do it. It has the most integration. It's been around uh, with go high level the longest. Um, it is not, it's not the oldest in this group. Um, but it's it does a good job for what it does, uh, and so and so it's it's you know very easy to use. It's it's free to use except for the they they get their they get paid through every transaction, and they offer some other services uh, in advance. But the the base level of it is easy to use and set up to start accepting credit cards and bank transfers and that sort of thing. So very very easy to get going. So Stripe is there now. As of last year, 2022, uh, or actually maybe even this year, um, yeah, I think it was this year, uh, back in February, January, February of this year, uh, they brought on Authorize.net. So Authorize.net has actually been around, it's with PayPal as to who's been around the longest. Uh, but in terms of credit card processors, Authorize.net has been around a very long time. Uh, so let me try to start uh, let me let me back up for a second. So Stripe is great, but Stripe is not available in every country. In fact, you if you go look at the Go High Level boards, uh, it is there are lots of issues posted about that. The message boards about uh, problems with Go High with Stripe not being accepted in 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 everybody's country, uh, or for whatever reason, uh, it's it's kind of North America centric. Um, but it's, it, it is accepted in some other places. And so, but there, there are problems. It's not accepted everywhere. 
Authorized.net, on the other hand, is accepted a whole lot more places. And I think the, the numbers for everybody are changing and growing and expanding, but that's been Authorized.net sales, uh, sales point for a long time. Is out of 180 countries or something, they're accepted in most of them. Uh, there, there are far fewer that it's not accepted in versus the ones it is. So it's a great way. It operates a lot like Stripe in, in the terms of go high level setup. Now, one thing I've, I've seen on this board, I've, one of our students in the Atlas Agency Launch Lab had a problem with this, and, and others do too, is that whenever you, and, and I did too, frankly, whenever you go set up uh, authorized.net, it gives you a choice. Do you want the merchant you know, account or do you want the payment gateway? Harkens back to our conversation before. So you are setting it up as a payment gateway. You are so they are the ones handling the transaction. They are the ones doing everything. So, so you can set up all the forms. You can set up all the everything. But at the end of the day, when it comes to somebody putting in their credit card number, they're doing it on one of these systems that are baked into your form. Uh, so then they do it. They they're putting. It's like it's like giving your credit card through a window. You know, and that window goes to the page. It's, it's not in your store. It's imagine a window in the back. And when you reach through just a little bit, it goes to there's a there's somebody or the bank on the other side. There a little credit card machine that runs your credit card. So that's kind of it's overly simplistic, but that's kind of what it's like. So um, so you have to set up authorized.net as a payment gateway. Uh, once you do that, it seems to function just like Stripe does, but it's it's available in more countries. Uh, then there's NMI, which I hadn't heard of until I started going down the credit card processing route. Um, and my understanding with it, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure people will, but NMI, I mean, it works in the United States and Canada and North America, but it's really in a lot of other countries. It's used primarily, it's, its focus is in some of the other countries. I would hazard a guess maybe some of the countries that Stripe doesn't serve as well. Um, but it is, it is accepted in other parts of the world. But Go High Level has decided that along with PayPal, all four of those there are supported in their platform. I've not set up NMI. I haven't had any experience with it, um, but I think it may serve some of the countries that the others don't. So all would be good to look into when you're considering who's going to process your, your payments for different things um, and, and sort of you know, do your own research, compare and contrast, talk to people who have had I think the go high level experience is probably about the same. The only one that's different is a little bit is PayPal. It's a little bit more limited in some respects, uh, but among Stripe, Authorize.net, and I would presume NMI, the experience is very, very similar. And we'll talk about some of that in just a little bit. Then the fifth thing, we just want to throw it in there because I know there'll be somebody jumping up and down going, well, okay, QuickBooks is here. And all these others are here. And, and I use, you know, Wave Accounting for those of you who have access to that, uh, myself included. Uh, so, yes, those are options as well. They are external. They are not processed directly within here. Uh, you can, you can like in the case of Wave, and I su suspect, which is an, it's an accounting software, and it's really well done. Uh, but it's not available in very many places at the moment. Um, and they make their money from oddly processing credit cards uh, and from uh, and from doing uh, payroll, mostly in the United States, maybe Canada as well. I don't think they're in the UK, but I don't know. Uh, but they're a, they're a cool little service uh, that's basically free, and it's it's very good accounting software. But then there's QuickBooks that, online that you know and has been around a long time, and and uh, wants to remind you of that from time to time. But they are integrated into Go High Level, whereas Wave is not. So, and others like it. So you can use any accounting system that you want. And if they process credit cards, that's fine. You're welcome to use that. Just know that you are processing them outside of Go High Level. Now you can perhaps take an embed. So, like Wave has a feature where you can um, you can post like on a website or a Facebook page or website or something like that. 
where they can actually fill out the form there. So again, that's that window concept. So if I want to accept a credit card right out on my website, I have a place where you put in a credit card number, but that's all coded in. That's that's going to wave. That's reaching through the window that is to to wave, wave accounting, and letting them and then filling out the information there, and then they they take it from there and they they handle the transaction, and and my website does not. So you can do the same thing inside Go High Level with something like that, but you can't. Uh, it's it's harder than to, you know, then then it doesn't it. It's hard to, for it to track any of the services. You kind of have to build that in with, uh, you know, with third-party integrations like a like a Zapier or a Pabli or somebody like that. Integrately, uh, there's a host of those now that do those that do those integrations, and so you can make some of that happen and get some limited functionality. But these first four, really, the fir- uh, in particular are already baked in that you can put them into funnels you own websites you can put them into forms you can put them into different all kinds of different things and uh and they they make it very very easy to do that so because everything's already there's even a one you know one and two click to one and two page payment deal that you can that you can bake into any of that already into go high level if you're using one of these top processors but wanted to acknowledge the others there. There's there's plenty of opportunity there. So, sorry guys, little heady. Uh, this is I, I don't know how to make this interesting, but it's it's something you're probably going to have to deal with how you process payments, um, and that's something we're going to get into in just a few minutes. So we're going to try to do some little little tips and tricks. With apologies for not having to get into show being able to get in, get in in time to show the products and show how that, I mean, I was going to jump into my Stripe account and show you the, my, my products are set up there. I mean, I'll talk about that in just a minute, but in the meantime, uh, let me take just a quick second. And this is the last time this, cause it's this Saturday. So you won't have to hear about this anymore, but if your agency is really at a point, if you're at a point that you're saying, you know what, I've been doing this marketing thing for a while. I'm not getting the clients I want. I'm getting burnt out. I'm not providing the sir. Their their clients are are cutting me because I'm not providing the services that I set out to provide, and and this is just not working out like I want. I I still love marketing. I still want to be here. I still want to be offering this to people. Then, then consider coming and letting us pour into you a little bit on Saturday. There's going to be five of us. We're all a part of Atlas Agency Launch Lab. It's a training program. It's a it's a 12 week 90 days training program for digital marketers and people who want to get into this space or who really want to up their game in this space. Um, If you're a freelancer, that's fine. But the idea is we're going to work with you and be setting up for you while you watch. By the way, I referenced on Tuesday the name of a, so I'm going to, I'm going to properly use the analogy today because I went and did my research and figured it out. There is a um, there is a company here in Houston, Texas, where I am called Hennessy Performance Engineering. Okay, Hennessy Hennessy Performance Engineering, like the like the the liquor. Um, so you can, and what they do is they take either existing factory vehicles or they sometimes kind of create some hybrid things from scratch, and they create some amazing vehicles. Uh, now, bear in mind, they are two and three hundred thousand dollar amazing vehicles, U.S., but they custom build each one of them. There was a there's an article you can search about Michael Jordan taking delivery of a car from Hennessy of a truck. I think it was from Hennessy that had a well over a thousand horsepower. I mean, it was they, they don't make a stock vehicle like this. Uh, but he had a nice long road. He could run it down and, you know, it'll do 200. I think I saw somewhere I heard an interview with the gentleman who runs Hennessy. And he said that car, that vehicle would do like 200 miles an hour, 210 miles an hour without even thinking about it. So and it just he just said you just you kept you, you go. It just kept going. It just kept getting faster and faster and faster. So imagine that as your marketing agency. So this vehicle is is being built alongside a very high performance vehicle. And while that's happening, you're watching the whole process. You're talking to the mechanics. You're talking to the designers. 
you they are showing you every single thing that they are doing and uh, you contribute a little bit to it but really they're just they're just pouring knowledge into you uh, the whole entire time that your vehicle is being built and you're and you're right there with them right next to them watching this happen and then at some point maybe they you know get it ready a little bit and you take a short test drive and then you bring it back in and then you make some more changes and some more tweaks and make sure everything is is absolutely the way you always wanted it and then at the end of that time at the it takes them 12 weeks to do that let's just say at the end of that time they hand you the keys and the, and then they make sure everything is is good to, they they test drive it with you they answer any questions. They make any changes that you have just right there. So that's what Atlas Agency Launch Lab is like. Uh, we go through this with our students. Uh, they are guaranteed to come out with at least one client right off the bat that's paying them money to, to recoup the cost of the program. And we have some, we have a couple that have, I mean, they have like seven or eight calls lined up now and, and, you know, we're we're trying to work with that with them because we actually close only the first one or two for free. So uh, we have some options for that, but they have they're finding themselves with great problems uh, in that they're what they're doing is working so well that they ha they're starting to have people lined up and they're they're still going through the course and and are and are struggling with that a little bit. So we're we're have, helping them to come along and realize that success and to not lose it. So there's fantastic tips, fantastic things that we share with them that you haven't, I promise you haven't heard most of them before. Uh, pretty amazing. So you're going to get a taste of that on Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. That's about, what did I put, 5 or 4 p.m. London Time, 4 or 5 p.m. London Time, uh, if you're in the U.K., Sorry, folks in Australia and New Zealand now or, and in the Eastern Hemisphere, we've got a solution for you, too. And I'll talk about that in a second. But we're going to go. We will go live with this. It'll we ha already have the lineup. I'm going to be on there talking about the top 10 ways that you can make money with, you know, go high level as soon as you set it up right away with your clients. And that gets into some of the fundamentals. We're going to talk about brain spotting. We're going to talk about A.I., uh, we're going to and and how to incorporate that into what we do. We're going to talk about uh, prospecting and sales and a look at it in a way that you haven't before. But it's getting real results. I mean, not just us. It's it's other people that that do do this the way we do it, and they're getting tremendous results. That's what we're going to start with. Um, and so just just tons of value for your free time. Uh, on, on Saturday. So if you want to do that, there's the website to go to atlasagencylaunchlab.xyz slash webinar. Uh, domains are being a little goofy with us, so we had to go this route. So and I will put that in the chat. Love to see you guys. Get signed up for that. Show you there. We have giveaways. We have some really cool giveaways. Um, and for, yeah, I'm going to be giving away snapshots uh, from Go High Level of the different fundamentals, things that I do. There's some other really neat stuff that's happening. And uh, one lucky person, if you sign up for the courses, one lucky winner is going to get their entire program paid for. So keep that in mind. Um, and we're, you know, we're starting October here. We still have a little bit of room left. And then uh, November will come and the prices will go up. So Great time right now to get that opportunity in before before it gets too far ahead. But I hear you. Everybody's selling training programs. So come Saturday for free, nothing but your time, and see what we're all about and see if this is something that you might be interested in investing your time and your money in uh, because you will get a tremendous amount out. Okay, that's my last pitch for that. It's very important. I mean, it's, it's you know, for, for what's going on. We hope you'll give it a shot. And uh, love to see you guys on it. So let's talk then. But you'll have to get the special instructions on the website itself. So back to what we're doing um, and credit cards. You know, in fact, the Atlas Agency Launch Lab deal was probably far more interesting. <laughs> but I hope we get to some of the good stuff now. OK, so these are some of this is things that I learned the hard way uh, because I get something all set up one way, even though I'd read, you know, some of the help and support documents and go high level. 
and then have to go back and rework it and retool it. And here's one of them. Uh, set up your products. Once you select a payment gateway to use, set up your products there first. Go high level tells you this. Do it. Um, because there is an interaction that goes back and forth between your payment gateway and go high level. And uh, to, to make all this happen, to make those forms happen, to make your invoices, if you use Go High Level to generate invoices, which you can't, um, it, it has to be set up properly. And you can't just go into Go High Level and start setting up products. They don't sync back the other direction. They tell you they don't sync back the other direction. Don't do it. So the absolute best thing you can do is set up first your products in your gateway of choice. Uh, Stripe makes this very easy. I haven't tried it at authorized.net, but I'm, I, like I said, I think it's very similar uh, in the way that it, the way that it does everything. So you'll want to set, uh, you'll have a, a, a heading, you'll have a description uh, as to what the, what the item is, uh, and then you will have a price. And now where they may or may not, you may have to work through is if there are variations. Let's say, for example, so everything that I sell is monthly for the most part. Uh, the services that I sell are month to month. And I want my clients to have that. I mean, I'll, I'll get you a contract if you really want a contract. We were having this discussion this morning in another situation. Uh, if you really want a contract, I'll get you a contract. But I would rather you have the assurance that, that I have to sing for my supper, as so to speak, every 30 days. I have to continue to provide value for you. Uh, and, and also, you know, services may be added. Services may drop off. Some of them do have a bit of a lifespan uh, in, in marketing. So once they're done, you don't need to, I mean, it'd be, it'd be awesome if you, you know, get to charge these high amounts for services that nobody uses. That'd be great. It's a great gig if you can get it. But if you're really in the business of providing value, true value to your clients, you will score many, 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 many points by saying, you know what? OK, we don't need that anymore. Let's drop that off and save you a little bit of money. Uh, it's already doing its job. We've built that website for you. Uh, we don't need to charge you that very high amount of money just to maintain it. Um, there's still something we still got to, you know, we'll still maintain it, but there's going to be a much lower cost associated with that than there was to build it and say in the first place. So uh, all that is a tangent to say, <laughs> set up your products first and then deal with the deal with the variants there. So I do have one product variant uh, that is if you sign up with me for a year, I give you two months free. OK, just for easy math. So. I would put that, I believe in Stripe, uh, how I did it was I added it and then added a separate product. Actually, no, I didn't. In Stripe, you can, you can, it was such that I could add a variation of it. So if you look under one of my uh, uh, system bundles that I have that I use as a foundation called Local Work, say, for example, that has a lot of local facing promotion things. Uh, there's the monthly cost, and then right below it, there's a thing you can set up that's the annual cost. And so, and then it will show both, and it will it will let you differentiate which one is which. So I suspect Authorize.net's the same way, and all of that will pull over into Go High Level. Now, at least in the case of Stripe, um, D, and you'll have to look at all the help documentation for any of the others, the authorized.nets, the NMIs, even PayPal. PayPal is pretty limited in what they'll do after a certain once you get the basics in there. Uh, but if there are changes in that in that amount, let's so once it's already in there, if you if you decide to change it inside of Go High Level, the price that shows up, you can do that. You can change the price inside Go High Level on a product that is already there, and it will push it back to Stripe in that case and update it. So, so you can't initiate this it's like messaging. You can't initiate it, but you can respond. You can update. So, so that's out there. So, yeah, do your get your products lined up first, and uh, and go from there. Now. 
Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to think through this. Okay. So next thing you want to do is map out your payment workflow. And this is, this is even headier on a heady subject. Okay. Like, okay. So you have, if you're going to, I'm, I'm a big business process mapping person. Okay. So I like to understand what is the process by which things happen? What is one step, then this step, then this step, then this step, and that's to make a sale. Okay. If I'm going to put, if I'm going to make sure somebody gets paid, this is part of fulfillment. So if I'm going to make sure I get paid for my services, what does that look like? Well, first they go to, they go to a funnel page that I created and it has a one step sale where you put in the credit card and it doesn't, there's one step and two step. One step, it puts everything on the same page, uh, payment information, address, everything associated with the credit card, say. And uh, and then from there, it goes to the thank you page and on. Two step, it just splits that out. So it's credit card first, then address, phone number, whatever associated with the card for billing, and then it goes on. So, and then after that, that I, I know that then goes to the, you know, that that goes over to the payment processor and then the money and they take care of it and the money shows up in my bank. So where this comes into play is when you're doing things like invoicing. Okay. What is the, what is, so what is the process when somebody from the time when somebody says yes to the time money shows up in your bank, what are the process steps that happen? Uh, this can help solve a lot of payment issues that I see with people, uh, that I hear about, that I see in in forums and, and chats and Facebook groups and all sorts of things, is understanding how, where how does the money flow from one to the next, not just from one bank to the other, but but from the client coming in and putting their card information. How do they how do they get their credit their credit card or bank account information to you? Uh, or, or to your payment processor to make this happen. You know, so understanding a little bit about how that works enough to to map out that process, even if you sit there and just make a outline. So you have point one, this happens, step one, this happens, step two, this happens, step three, this happens. I'm going to take a little side trip. I'm going to add one that says A, and it uh, it may be, you know, a client comes to this place and fills out something or a, a better example. I send them an invoice. They click the thing on the invoice and uh, and then it goes to a Web page that I have to have set up and then they pay it. You know, who's handling that? Well, QuickBooks is handling that or Wave is handling that and they have their own little pages. And so all that is to say, try to as best you can under map out and understand in a way that you, in a way that makes sense to you, how that process works, uh, how the payment, how the steps go from the client saying yes to you getting paid and what happens in between every step that you're aware of. You might be surprised at how, how eye opening that can be. Um, but at the very least, it will it will help you understand the journey your client goes through to try to pay. You. So that's that's just as much or more important than some of the others. OK. All right. So then we go to. OK, yeah, I was I've got like five point four points in here. All right. So to sign up with some of these, you may already know. You will need some business information. I mean, I don't know what your business looks like if it's not, you know, uh, North America or, or UK based. Um, I don't know how they do that differently, but they they may do it a little differently. So understand that when you go to sign up for Stripe or Authorize.net or even PayPal, uh, they may ask, you may need to have some documentation in place to prove that you're an actual business. Um, what that looks like for every country and every situation is a little different. I will tell you that in the U.S., I'm set up presently as a sole proprietor because I can insure against other crazy things happening until such time as I'm ready to. There, are reason, there will be reasons for me to incorporate 
as an LLC, but that's not right this second. So in the so how I set up these is different from somebody with a corporation trying to set them up and providing documentation. So there are there are different things that you may be required to do. Don't be scared of it. It's it's if they're going to assume that liability for you, these these companies, they need to know who you are. So treat treat your business as legitimate. You you know, I'm not suggesting otherwise, but treat it like a real business, even though you may have just sole proprietor information, which is in the U.S. is very basic. Um, that's fine. Still treat it like your business. Uh, make sure everything is accurate. Make sure everything is is not put in in such a way that it, it looks shady because these companies that do this, that handle this money, that get these fees, they're they're very experienced. They will they will sniff silly things like that out, uh, and and at the very least will you know will will deny you access to set up an account on there. At the most, it could end up in you know prosecution, depending or getting somebody's attention whose attention you don't want. So make your best effort to to be as legitimate a business as as you can, even if you're small. That's okay. Um, and, and to answer all the questions as truthfully as you can, anything that they ask for as truthfully as you can and go through the process with them to set up people who have problems with this are the ones that are, that have other problems they need to think about. So try your best in setting up these to provide the, the business information as you have, as you have set it up and understood it. And if you, you know, if it's, if it's even part of the way. I mean, if it's if you don't have all the information they need, but it's truthful and they can verify it, then things will probably be OK uh, and you won't have anything to worry about. So keep that in mind when you're processing any credit card transaction, because that's you're hiring these companies to process credit cards, to process bank drafts, to, you know, even Apple Pay and Google Pay is is not a. And Samsung. I don't want to exclude our, 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 my, my Android people because um, I'm an Android person. But that all of that is. No, I don't know what that's about. Okay, so um, that's really bizarre, huh? Phone just completely went off out of the blue. Okay, so wow. That's that really kind of threw me off. I didn't, your phone's not supposed to do that in the middle of something, especially when it's muted. Okay, so just yeah, just be legitimate about what you're doing, and uh, and 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 good things will happen. Things will work out, and you'll have to provide that information to be set up to process credit cards and and transactions anyway, um, to to have legit places for them to be. Okay, so um, all right, so. Compare payment methods. We were talking about that just a second ago before my phone uh, started eavesdropping on me. Um, so decide what you're going to accept and what you're not in terms of payment methods. Okay. So Visa, MasterCard, pretty standard that everybody, you know, is okay with accepting those. There may be other, I'll talk about some of the, a couple of the other credit card pieces in, in, a, in a moment. There's one, uh, JCB, that is uh, Diner or Diners Club uh, that has been around. They've sort of now hooked up with MasterCard because they weren't as well known uh, in every place that they that they wanted to be. So so they have uh, so they're they're pretty much good. Um, then you have you have American Express, which is a little bit different approach. Um, and then we'll get into to some of the other methods here in just a minute. Now, American Ex every credit cards charge somebody, usually the merchant, if you you know want good PR, uh, the the charge so they have to charge somebody fees for using their card for a customer's ability to go around and and use that card. So. That it's it's um okay, yeah. They 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 want to charge some. So 
the fees that Visa and MasterCard charge are lower as a whole than American Express is. American Express spends their money investing in security and fraud protection and not suggesting the others don't, but the, they, they invest in some other things and they have really elevated their brand as American Express to, and so they feel they can charge merchants a higher rate to accept their card. And so generally they do. So for example, the typical final credit card rate, this may or may not be what you as a merchant pays, but it's two and a half to three in it to, or so let's just say 3% for easy math. Okay. It's changed some, but, and, and how that works varies. Uh, whereas Visa MasterCard is 3%, American Express is 3.5% of every transaction is the fee they charge to process it uh, for you to be able to accept their card as a, as a merchant, as a marketer, as a business um, you know, accepting credit cards. So, and they, they authorize that differently. They, they say to offer other stuff. So not everybody accepts American Express for that reason. Uh, not as much as they say they do, but it's they have worked hard to be accepted primarily in a lot of different places in, in the world. So the idea is you can take that card and you can go to many, many different places throughout the world. And they and they, you know, they're they're accepting American Express where they may not accept others. So sometimes if you're traveling, that's a good one to have uh, versus not all the, the banks uh, function that way. So uh, then you have bank transactions. You have ACH. It's ACA, and there's differences between a wire and ACH and a and a bank debit, but it's mostly ACH uh, where there is actually a fee for that, but it's a lot less than, say, doing a credit card. Well, there are some trade-offs for accepting the, the ACH bank drafts. Number one, yes, it's a lower... They charge you less. They charge you maybe 1% where the credit cards are charging you 3 and 3.5%. Three and so it's quite a bit less in some cases. Uh, they also is that's direct access to your account, to your bank account. So if something happens, you know, they can, then they can use that potentially as getting access to your bank account. And there is no backstop like there would be a credit card for fraud. If there's a problem, you can clean out a bank account with fraudsters can do that. Uh, the other thing that we learned the hard way is if you use bank draft, then ACH, and somebody doesn't like the service that they paid you for, they can, after before a certain amount of time, pull their money back out. They can go to their bank and say, that's, that's fraud. That's not working. I don't like that service. I want a refund. They will pull that money back out of your account that was sitting in there. And, uh, and and take it with them, uh, which credit card is not necessarily that way. It could ultimately end up being that way, but it's it's not as easy. So keep that in mind if you're talking about accepting you know bank transactions. It's a it's a lower rate on everybody, but it's it, it comes with some trade offs. Okay. So uh, and then you have the the Apple Pay's and Google Pay's and the wallets like that are pretty much. Um, they are their their means to accept credit cards. Pretty much, they're not their own currency necessarily. They they are you tie them to a, a credit card, and they work that out where it um, where they 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 debit from there. So if you want to have that ability, that really only works if somebody's in person, if they're a physical presence. Otherwise, it really doesn't matter that much that you accept that you accept say apple pay uh on your website or that you send them an invoice that accepts apple pay because they really should be standing in front of you and uh and processing that that card so there are you owe it to yourself to do a little bit of research when you're setting up payment methods deciding which ones that you're going to that you're going to use and which ones you're not going to use uh and so uh it's it's you know, worth do, worth doing, but certainly Visa and MasterCard, pretty standard. You want to add Discover, Diners Club, stuff like that, fine. If you have a, if you're doing business in another country that has kind of has a payment method, 
and we're talking about the the WeChats of the world. Uh, that's sort of its own payment method. Uh, you know, you might consider that depending on where your where your business is and whatever comes with using that as currency. Um, and so they and, and tying it to your bank or if there's some other service like that in other countries, uh, you might explore the pros and cons of, of using it. So uh, do do some comparison shopping, do your homework. Most all of these payment gateway methods we've talked about support them. So just do that homework for yourself. And um, well, yeah, that's uh, I guess it kind of went. I guess it kind of went. So yeah, do do some comparison shopping. Really map out. So really map out how you want the payment experience to be for your customers, as an agency. Take, you know, take a take a couple of hours, and really stop and think about this and saying, are we accepting the right credit cards uh, that they're wanting to pay with? Uh, can we do invoicing and then we send them a link to pay? Is that is will that work for the particular clientele? If you're doing a lot of businesses, they're used to that. You send them a you send them an email with a link and they click on it and pay. Their account's payable, clicks on it and pays it. And it's it's not a problem. Or they they do that with a credit card, or maybe they do that with an invoice and then they there is some other way that they that they pay you through bank draft or what have you. Think about the Think about your customers, think about the process that's involved and uh, think about then the process that you, how you want that to go. Uh, what is the easiest way for everybody? Um, you know, there's even some discussion about who pays the credit card fees or the bank fees. Well, guess what, Mr. Marketer, Mr. Merchant, you do. You should. Can you pass it along? Yes, you can. Should you pass it along? No. No, you should not unless there is some real major reason why. Um, or you do like a lot of people, you build it into the cost of what you're selling, uh, which, which happens all the time and that's okay, but don't call out the fact that they're paying the credit card fees or the, or the bank transaction fees or wire fees or anything else, because as soon as they see that, they're, they're, they're gonna shoot you down, I promise. So, <laughs> Really spend some time thinking about how that goes. Do some comparison shopping. And then the, the process is in putting it into go high level. Put your products in first uh, into your payment gateway of choice. And then sync that to go high level. And you'll already have your process steps in place as to what you're going to do. And it should go really smoothly. So, okay, guys, we got through it. <laughs> Talking phones and all. So, it's uh, it's been very, very heady. I apologize for that. There's really not another way to do it. Uh, let me double check the comments here just for a second. Um, let's see if there are any. Um, no, just people just uh, looks like looks like people checking in to say hello. So hello, guys. Thank you very much for for being a part of this and waiting through this with me. It's kind of tough. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. In terms of questions, kind of how this could work, some other stuff that I've that I've come across, or some other items that I've seen. Uh, this is one of those things that you just, you, like I said, you just gotta take two hours in the beginning and just sort it out as to how you're gonna do this. Or and and periodically, it's not an or; it's you should do both. Periodically revisit it, make sure that it's the experience that you want, make sure that. You know, sometimes these credit card companies have crept up on the fees and uh, and maybe you want to do something different. Um, it won't it doesn't work for online, but it may work for your customers, for your clients that are physical uh, brick and mortar locations. There are there are programs that ECI does one of them where and, and, and others like it that you basically incentivize them to pay catch. They end up paying the credit card fees, the customer does, but you you it's called a cash discount. And so it's, you know, you go in to buy, uh, you know, a pizza and it's, you know, $20 for a good, good, a good whole round of pie, they call it in, in the Northeast. So uh, for, a, for a whole pizza, you know, let's just say it's $20. Or if you pay cash, it's $16. 
So, I mean, it's, it's a cash discount for doing that. You're essentially, it's just a, it's just a clever way of, or trying to be a clever way of getting them to pay the credit card fees um, and just disguising it. Because if you said it's $16, oh, and your credit card fee is $4. I'd be like, no, no, you're not going to charge me that. Never mind. You're charging them that. They just don't know it. So it's, it's a little bit of client psychology there. So the, but again, thinking through that process, thinking through how to do that uh, is is worth your time. It's worth a little bit of time invested, you know, every few months to make sure that that the system is working like you think it's supposed to. It's also worth it if you decide to change some of your pricing and you go through, you then have, if you've already got it in go high level through those payment gateways and they've synced over to go high level, then you can go, you can go into go high level and change that pricing. Uh, but before you do that, you know, try to do some research. Make sure you're getting paid what your time is worth. That's a whole nother subject we may talk about getting, and, and I did it too, about getting into the freebie stuff, uh, adding a whole bunch of value things for free. And then suddenly when it comes time to buy, people may not need your services funny how that works so it's it's some it didn't necessarily happen to me but once i saw it presented the other way that no more free trials um it it made a whole lot of sense to me in in ways that it shouldn't have otherwise so i don't know if there's any other topics on this other than it's it is worth your time and consideration if you do have questions about it uh drop them in the comments just put them or just put them out there in the group itself. And, and as some people have done and, and all of us, I mean, there's other people that have different credit card experiences or different payment method acceptance experiences with go high level with getting it into go high level. It's I'm sorry, it's not a perfect process. It's gotten a whole lot better. And it's, and if you do it the way I just talked about where you put your products in your payment gateway first and then sync them over, it's a whole lot easier but if you don't do it that way, it can be a mess. So, uh, and it can be a mess of, of synchronization. So it's, it's not perfect. So put your questions out there in the group, put your experiences of to what you've done that's worked well. If there's a particular payment method of the four, uh, that's, that's just to refresh, that is um, authorized.net or Stripe or NMI or PayPal. If there's one that you use that you've had good experiences with, uh, let us know or something we need to look out for. Don't just sit there and say, oh, you know, it's PayPal. I hate them. OK, why? What was the experience like that made you hate them uh, in terms of us processing credit cards here? We're all small business. We're all our own small business success stories, but we're also can be coaches, too. We have stories to share. So put those out there as well. And the offer still stands from the beginning of the program. If you have some training you'd like to contribute, you'd like to show people how to do it or something that you've done that is special uh, that you that you would be willing to share with this group, send me a private message. Let's connect up. Let's see what it's all about. And then uh, and then if it's uh, if it's good, if it's you know, if it's something, you know, cool and unique and, and helpful to everybody as a whole, then we'll get you out here on the, on the training and I'll, I'll walk you through it. So uh, being in, on live on video sometimes can be a little intimidating. So, but I'll, I'll promise I will help you work through all that. Don't see any other comments. So I will say we're going to sign off for now. Now um, I will put that webinar link in the chat. It's in a different Facebook group than this one is set up exclusively for this purpose. Uh, oh, and I mentioned uh, for those of you who are in the Eastern Hemisphere, uh, the time really doesn't work for you that well unless you just want to stay up till, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning. That's fine. Love to have you. Uh, Australia, that's a little rough. It's about two or three a.m. Um, for an 11 a.m. Eastern time start on Saturday for the webinar. But... If you if you go to that web website, you fill that out and fill your information out and you are in those time zones, let us know, because then we will put you on a list and we will send you exclusive link to that webinar where you can watch it uh, whenever you get up the next day and you can see what it's all about and you won't miss out on anything. So 
And you'll also that way get into the consideration for the giveaways. If you just want to watch it later and you in you know whatever and you don't come back and we don't know you're there, then you know you won't be in consideration for the giveaways that, that we're having. But if you had to miss it because of time zone, no problem. And we'll be back here speaking of time zones next Tuesday night at 6:30 uh, p.m. Central Time at 7:30 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday night for the regular Q and A. And, uh, and we'll catch you folks uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere, Australia, Sydney time, about 10 a.m. the next morning. And uh, or actually, I'm sorry, it's about 9 a.m. the next morning, 9.30. So uh, if there's anything else in the meantime, put it in the group for all of us to share and all of us to learn from. And uh, have a great week and a great weekend. And we will talk to you very, very soon. Thank you.